I've been kicking around a uh, Justin Verlander trade. We saw a report earlier today. Max Scherzer could be willing to waive a no, uh, his no-trade clause at the deadline to the right team if Mets indeed are sellers. What if Justin Verlander is kind of in that conversation? What if the Mets want to shed some salary, they want some prospects in return, they just kind of want to press the reset button? What would be the level of intrigue for the Houston Astros to trade for Justin Verlander? I have a way here, too. Like, I don't want to take and absorb the entire $43 no. million dollars. What if you shed the Rafael Montero contract in the process? So now your delta is $31 million. You're adding 43 of Verlander, but you're getting rid of 12 and a half of Rafael Montero. How about you trade Rafael Montero, Pedro Leon? I put this on Twitter a second ago. I might have I might have oversold the package a little bit. But you trade Rafael Montero, get out of the contract, Pedro Leon, Spencer Arigetti, Jacob Melton for Justin Verlander. I think it's too much. I think that they're desperate enough to just get out from under it. I think that if you did one or two sweeteners along with Montero, I think that that's a deal that the Mets would be willing to accept. If I'm the Astros, I'm not willing to accept that deal. I have flexibility to go out and do whatever I want to do right now, and I am and I don't have any concerns about the last year of the think, Verlander deal. I don't think you have flexibility to do whatever you want because your system is not great, and maybe I want to prospect too much. Rafael Montero, Pedro Leon, Jacob Milton for Justin Verlander. I don't yeah. like it. I do that. I do that right now, and I'm usually a prospect guy. But I get out of the Montero contract. Yes, I add the Verlander contract, but Verlander has a sub-3.5 ERA in his last five starts. Looks a little bit more like vintage Justin Verlander. And I get that pitching isn't the problem for the Astros' best pitching ERA in baseball. I'd rather have Justin Verlander throwing every fifth day than Renel Blanco. Well, the other thing is now you've got an insurance policy and don't have to be as concerned with the need to get Urquidy back. Right. Now you your pitching staff looks like your starters are going to be playoff worthy at, no matter who's healthy and who's not from the people that have been injured because you've got Verlander as a 1B to Fromber's 1A and then you still have Javier and Brown and now your bullpen gets better with the and erases the loss of Montero with other pitchers that can slide into the bullpen then to be available. Let's get Trade rid of Lance. the let's get rid of the Arigetti. You're not trading Lance. Let's get rid of the Arigetti thing. Montero, Leon, Jacob Milton for for Justin Verlander. I'm doing that. Yeah, like, I, I would do that too. Because you're like I understand it's only that you're a adding salary. Verlander, right? Well, he's got a vesting option for a third, but it's like seventeen million dollars. So it's forty three, forty three, and then like seventeen if he pitches enough innings next year. But you get out of the Montero deal. I, I'm not bullish on Pedro Leon. He's not, he doesn't hit for a high enough average for me in the minors that I've been bullish on him as a big leaguer. I'm curious about Jacob Melton, but he's in his second year in the bigs. Like, I'm making that trade. I'm doing that trade right now. What do you think? What would you rather pay, Verlander or Montero's contract? Well, I think Verlander is the guy that you know. I mean, he knows for mo you know for multiple years he's got the stuff that can get guys out. And it might be a little different than when you first signed him and, and before Tommy John and even – when he, the regular season after Tommy John, and we had concerns in the playoffs. But as bad as the Mets have been, like the other night, even against Milwaukee, he gives you, six, I think, six strong innings where he doesn't give up a run, and he leaves one nothing, and the relief pitcher coming in gives up a two-run bomb, and the next thing you know, they lose 2-1. to one. Not his fault. Still gave you a quality start, shut down the other team, and his stuff capable of doing that. His numbers aren't through the roof bad either. He's capable still of pitching at a high enough level. I don't know that Montero is. You know I've been harping on this since they signed him to the deal. That all that it says to me is he had a career year last year. It doesn't say anything about him going forward and doing it again or even close. And now from what we've seen, there's even more doubt that he'll ever get it back again. So if you can get out from that disaster and at least know you're getting a usable experienced piece like Verlander, that's something I'm going to consider. He's been pretty good lately. Verlander's been all right. Last five starts, he's got a 333 ERA. Is that Cy Young Verlander? No. no. But 333 ERA, you take that in the rotation, wouldn't you? Yeah, and He's even, also averaging a strikeout per inning in those last five defense starts. defense has been, too. The Mets? Yeah. yeah they're they're a disaster. Back starts. A brutal disaster. There you go. Bring and, them back, baby. Bring and the, thing the greatest with Justin, starting pitcher in Astros history back to the H. The thing with Justin Verlander is that like his problems versus Montero problems are almost good. Montero, it's you could lose any single game you want. Justin Verlander, his biggest problem is he's going to choke in the World Series. But you're still going to get to the World Series most likely with Justin Verlander. 
in your rotation. Those are good problems to have. Just don't pitch them then. I would not. rather worry about Justin Verlander choking in the World Series than see Montero ever again in my life. Same. He yeah. stinks. Verlander's way more, obviously. But I rather play. I rather pay the Verlander contract than the Montero contract. Easy, easy. I mean, look, easy. and Jim Crane gets his golfing buddy back. Gets his golfing. That's everybody's right. happy. Everyone's happy. Verlander hates New York. Hates yeah, it there. I, I, I just think, as much as it's far fetched, I mean, you think about it and go, really, it's the best of both worlds for the Mets getting out of paying two guys ninety plus million dollars. Each guy pitches every fifth day on top of all the other contracts they have and underachieving the way they have. But if you take JV and put him back on this team, it's not been the defense that's been the problem. No, pitching hadn't been the problem either. And and you well, but di- pitching depth with all the injuries. Still number one in ERA. So, but I'm just saying, but if you add a guy like that to what they already have, but from his perspective, he's got a three plus or three whatever ERA you said. Could be a lot lower if he had a better defensive team behind him and also gave him some run support to where his wins and losses might be different as well. That, I'm not that, talking that about... might be a problem. <laughs> the run support thing might be a problem for the Astros. Right, but I'm saying, okay, if the, when, when healthy, if you get Verlander back in the mix, I, the, the offense might be more productive than the Mets. Can he play first base, this Verlander guy? I don't I don't think it's out of the... I don't think it's crazy to think the Mets might blow it up. I don't... Uh... Because, like, they've got yeah. some really <laughs> bad contracts like that they can't get out of. I mean, Francisco Lindor's contract is... It's terrible. He's hitting like 215. Yeah, he's hit, yeah he's 226 this year. Last year he hit 270, but in 2021 he hit 230. He's been a, a below average, just very bad shortstop. A lot of bombs since he signed that massive deal. Like they've spent so much money, they're not winning. They're not going to win. They're never going to be better than the Atlanta Braves. I know Steve Cohen just bought his shiny new toy, and he thinks he can just spend billions of dollars. But at some point, he's going to wise up. And the first two, like the most valuable assets you have might be JV and Scherzer. But the problem is, is if you don't move them this year, their value just keeps going down because they keep getting older. older. Yeah. Like this is the moment, if I were the Mets, to blow it up and be like, yeah, man, we got to restart here. Yeah. We got to get rid of these two guys. I'm willing to give them three prospects. Leon, Arigetti, Melton. But you have to take on the, the Montero salary. And I think they would. Like they're not worried about spending money. They're all they're spending all sorts all sorts of money. 